Hi everybody, my name is Nick Justrician. I teach virtual production at Drexel University, and we're just going to show how we can take head movement captured in a facial capture tool with Unreal and make sure that we can apply those head movements to the body of a metahuman so the metahuman works properly. So let me uh, get ready to do my take here. I've got my metahuman set up in Take Recorder, and I'm just going to do a head demo. I'll take off my glasses to help with this capture, and uh, just pretend to take a phone call here. Hello? Um, yeah, okay, go ahead. All right, that's my take. I'll go ahead and stop. And now I should have my animation all set to go right here. So let's see how we're going to use this in our MetaHuman. Okay, so this is what we really want out of this. Let me just play this back really quick. Hello? Um, yeah, okay, go ahead. Okay, so it doesn't look particularly remarkable, but what's important that's going on here is that the head animation take was recorded onto the face head model. And so you can see that right here. If I scrub through, you can see the head moving around. And we want that head motion to be on our full metahuman. And specifically, we want it playing back on the body. Metahumans are designed to be animated with the body all the way up until the face. And if we start messing around with post-process animation blueprints or animation blueprints in the head, uh, we can get into all kinds of trouble. I've gotten a few messages from, uh, you know, online communities and students and such that, you know, the, the big deal is that if they adjust anything on the head, we could end up with issues where the head control rig doesn't work or the head doesn't follow the body. Uh, so what we're doing here in this setup is applying the neck and head animation in terms of the overall motion at the body level. And by doing that, we don't have to touch anything in the head and face itself. It operates as designed. And even the adjustments that we're making to the body are very, very minor and easily reversible. Uh, one of the more important things about this is that we still have full use of the body control rig. So the facial control rig, as it's activated right now, has no controls for neck and head motion, but the body control rig does. And right now, the way this is set up with the head animation copied from the head onto the body. If I right click and bake to my control rig, I'm going to bake to the metahuman control rig. Well, then we're going to get the full body control rig with it neck controls, having that head motion baked on. So let's just let that finish. And there we go. There's our head and neck controls. And as we scrub through, all that head motion is still in our animation. Let's play this back. Hello? There it is, moving to the left. Um, Looking up. Yep. yep. Okay. So all that animation is now baked into the body control rig where it belongs. So that's what we want to achieve here. And it's actually not particularly complicated. So let's get started from the beginning. Okay. I'm going to start here in my MetaHumans folder. We really have three stages to this process. Number one, we need to tell Unreal Engine that the skeleton of the head model is compatible with the skeleton of the body model. Second, we need to set up a blueprint for the body model so that we can blend head animation with body animation. And then our final and third step is going to be using that in Sequencer. So the first step is to uh, let Unreal know that the skeletons are compatible. And what do I mean by that? Well, if I double click on the animation that I had recorded, Here's that little recording, and it's recorded just to the head skeleton. However, over here, if I look at the structure of this skeleton and select root, for example, let's see if we zoom out here, I've got my settings in such a way that under bones, I'm showing the selected only. And so when I select a bone here in the hierarchy, it shows up in the viewport. So root is down here at the ground, just like it is for the body. And there's a pelvis bone, just like there is for the body, as well as spine one, two, three, four, five. And uh, we also have neck one and neck two and so on. So these joints here that are in the head skeleton 
are 100% compatible with what we would find in the body skeleton. So now we know that, we need to let Unreal Engine know that. So I'll close this and find the, uh, the base skeleton mesh for the metahuman. So in my metahuman folder, I'll go to my search panel and type in BAS for base. And there is our metahuman base skeleton. I'll double click on that to open it up. And what I'm doing here is I'm going to the retarget manager. Okay. So if you don't have that, maybe this is what you see, just click this button retarget manager. And this is the area that we're interested in. Manage compatible skeletons. We're going to add a skeleton and we'll type in face and we're looking for the face archetype. So there we go. We'll just add that. And that's all we did. So we've not damaged anything at all. We've simply told Unreal Engine that this skeleton for the face archetype is compatible with this body skeleton. What this allows us to do now is add facial animation tracks to the body track of Sequencer for metahumans. So that's one step. We got that all set up. And let's clear that out. And then the next thing that we need to do is set up our animation blueprint for just the body so that we can blend animation from both the head and the body together and they'll play nice together. So let's add this animation blueprint that we need for the body. I'll just right click in my content browser metahuman folder. I'll go to animation and choose animation blueprint. Now, the first thing that happens is I have to choose what skeleton I want this animation blueprint to adjust. And so I'm going to type in the word base here in the search and choose the metahuman base skeleton. Go ahead and create. And that gives us our blueprint. I'm just going to give it a name of MH uh, face slot anim BP. All right. Control S to save that. And the reason I've named it face slot and MVP, well, it's going to become clear really quickly here. I'm just going to double click this. And here's why I named this face slot and MVP. In the anim slot manager, we can see that metahumans have two different input slots. Now, when you open this up, uh, this anim slot manager may not appear by default. So let me just close that for a second. And if you want to bring that up, you just go to the window menu and choose Anim Slot Manager. It's almost halfway down the menu. And again, we have a default slot and a face slot. So what this allows is two different animation inputs into our skeleton, and we can control which inputs operate different parts of the body. So let's first get those two slots into our animation blueprint. So I'll right click and type in default slot and select that from our pop-up. And then I'll select this node and control D to duplicate it. And with my duplicate selected, I'm just going to go over to the details for that selected node. And for slot name, I'm going to choose face slot. Okay. So back in my blueprint, I've got a default slot input and I've got a face slot input. So now I have the ability to input at least two different animations into this skeleton. So we need to blend these appropriately so that our output pose is what we want out of these two animations. To do that, we're going to use a node called uh, Layered Blend Per Bone. So I'll right click and type in Blend Per Bone. And there's the node. Select that. And we want our default slot to go into the base pose. And we want our output to go into the final result. And we want our face slot to go into the blend pose. Now with this node selected, I'm going to go over to the details and under the layer setup, I need to define what bone is going to be the point at, in the uh, skeleton hierarchy branch that the blending input, the face input is taking over. So I'm going to add a new member here to the blend branch filters, expand that. And we want the, uh, face animation to take over at the neck one bone. So I'm going to type in neck underscore O one, and that's a capital N for the neck. Hit enter. And now as animation comes in from the face slot, goes into the blend per bone, any animation on the neck bone for neck one and neck two and the head is going to be driven by this face slot input. Now, the only thing is we don't want to break the regular function of metahumans. And the regular function for metahumans is that the default slot, the default animation input controls the entire body. If we leave things set up as they are right now, 
the default slot would come in and maybe not operate the neck at all because this blend for bone is overriding it with a face slot that might not have any animation. So let's set our blend weight to zero so that we're not actually doing any blending at all. And so therefore with the blend weight to zero, the default slot comes in and just goes out the output pose. So this is our default behavior for the metahuman body. But I want to be able to adjust this value in sequencer. So I'm going to grab the input pin for this blend weight, drag away and release, and choose promote to variable. Of course, I'll want to name that variable, and that'll be face value. Because we want to take our animation at face value. All right, by default, it's a float because that's the input value. So now that float ideally will default to zero. We can't see the default value until we compile. So I'm going to use the compile button here. And there we are, face value defaults to zero. So by default, as long as this is zero, all our animation behaves exactly like it did before we ever set up this blueprint. That's perfect. And then face value, let me select that variable. One last thing that's really important is I need to be able to edit this value in sequencer. So I'm gonna go over to the details and look for the exposed to cinematics and check this box. By doing this, now sequencer will have access to this variable and we'll be able to set a key value and set this to one if we want to use it. It can be left at zero and not animated at all if we're just going to use the default behaviors. All right, let's compile and save. This is ready to go. We can close it and let's put this to use in sequencer. So I'm just going to right click and create a new sequence. So cinematics, level sequence, head movement, SCQ, control S to save, double click. All right, now before I add any animation to my metahuman, I'm gonna select my metahuman actor in the level and go over to the details and select the body component. With the body component selected, I can go down to the animation section and set the animation mode to use animation blueprint. And that anim class, well, that's just gonna be that uh, animation blueprint we just created, MH, face, and there it is, face slot anim BP. So now this animation blueprint will govern the motion of the body. So now I can select my metahuman and put this to use in sequencer. I'll add a track for my metahuman Let's make sure that our default behaviors still work. So I should be able to grab my controls and hit E, and wiggle that around. Wonderful. Let's get rid of this control rig and add an animation. Right click, delete. And for the body, we'll add an animation. In this case, I'm going to do the uh, body phone animation. So I type in the word phone. And interestingly, I've got two animations that are on the body and one animation that's on the head. The head is now available for applying animation to the body because we set that compatibility in the first step of this process. For now, I'm just going to choose MH talking on the phone. And what we should see is just our mocap. So this is actually a Mixamo uh, animation, and this shows uh, basic animation, and the head motion is coming from this talking on the phone animation. Now we want to add the head motion from our face take. And just so we can reference that face take, I've got a, a head mesh here. So I'll just go to the beginning, add a track for that head mesh. And for reference purposes, I'm going to delete the control rig and add an animation, which is our capture. I think I'll type in the word phone here. And here's our face phone head demo. Okay. So now you can see on this head, the animation for that head. Okay, great. And we've got different head movement here. You see how the, the head moves to the left, moves up, great. Let's make this animation a little longer. I'll go to frame 300, set the end there. And now we can see that full animation a little better. All right, clearly this animation is not on this head yet. So let's apply it. Starting at the beginning, I'm going to first add this head animation 
to our body. Now, just to, as a heads up, it's not going to work perfectly when we first apply it. So go to body plus animation, typing in the word phone. And I'm going to choose face phone head demo. So this is exactly the same animation as we have on this head. It's the same animation that got captured and things are looking a little weird now. And the reason is we haven't set up the use of our slots. So this head demo needs to be set to the face slot. So let's right click properties and go to slot name and change this to face slot. Enter. And now this face animation is going into the face slot, but we're not seeing it at all. And the reason we're not seeing it is remember the animation blueprint that's on our MetaHuman by default ignores that face slot. So now in Sequencer, we just need to activate that face slot in the animation blueprint. So I'll go back to the beginning. I'm going to add a track to the body. I'm going to choose the anim instance for our face slot animation blueprint. Now I've got a track for that. And for the plus symbol for that track, I'm going to add the face value variable. By default, that's zero. I'm going to change that value to one. And now the head motion is going to come from the face slot. Head moves to the left. Head looks up. And we're good. Okay, so the only thing we have left to do really is to get the facial animation playing on the face. And all we have to do for that is to add our facial animation to the face track of our metahuman. Right now we still have the control board. Let's get rid of that. Right click, delete. And then for the face, we want to make sure we get to the beginning of our animation. Add animation. I'll type in the word phone and I'll select the face animation for that. So now our facial animation is on the face of our metahuman. The head motion is coming from that very same animation, but it's playing out on the body where it belongs and we're ready to go. From here, if I wanted to, I could go ahead and right click on the body track and bake to the control rig, the metahuman control rig, and I could edit the body performance. I can also go to the face, right click, bake to control rig, the face control board, and I can edit that. And everything else about our metahuman is untouched and operating perfectly. So I hope this helps. Until next time, have fun.